My name's Tom Kirkham. I'm a computer scientist at SDFC. I work at the Hartree Centre. So SDFC basically is, is effectively, you can compare it to the national laboratories in, in the US. It's um, a multidisciplinary scientific research organisation funded centrally by government. Um, and a good way to distinguish it from universities is that we look after the the big scientific facilities you can't fit inside a university. So if you go on to the next slide, um, there's two of our facilities on that, uh, two of our large facilities. So we've got the Diamond Synchrotron, which is effectively the size of a football stadium, and the Isis uh, Neutron Source. Uh, both these are uh, two examples of our large scale experiments uh, located at laboratories within Oxfordshire. We've also got laboratories across other points in the UK and overseas. Um, these two um, uh, facilities are effectively particle accelerators, looking at different particles, uh, being able to analyze materials in different ways. We also have got space science, uh, astronomy, um, lasers, as well as the computing facilities within SDFC. So the beauty of doing these short projects is that you've got access to other scientists, over a thousand scientists who work across all these different facilities. So they can look at a whole variety of different ideas and challenges that you might have thought up in the food industry you want to address. And, and the greatest thing about talking to somebody who works in the domain is that they can say to you quickly whether your idea has got legs or whether you want to try something different. And that enables these initial projects to really sort of lay the foundations of something uh, larger. Um, and I'll just quickly scan over the Hartree stuff. So next slide, please. Uh, Hartree um, is, the, is, is coming out of the computing side with SDFC. So we've always had uh, large scale computing facilities because a lot of this, obviously a lot of the facilities within SDFC produce a lot of data. Uh, we also process data from CERN, the Large Hadron Collider based in Switzerland as well. Uh, that is, you know, petabytes of data, huge amounts of storage, huge amounts of processing. Uh, next slide, please. And what HBC, high performance computing, is useful for, obviously, for science, for finding the insights, such as detecting the patterns to identify the Higgs boson, but also, for instance, within genomics and, and analyzing bioinformatics, we can create workflows to scan through huge amounts of data to analyze uh, variation and different materials, materials based within food additives and things like that, all the way through uh, to AI, where we use image recognition, um, remote sensing technologies and things like that to predict climate change impacts on agriculture. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, in a nutshell, Hartree, we do modeling and simulation code optimization, data science and, and product design. Uh, next slide. And the best way to get involved with us um, via these initial projects is, is a good foot in the door and then we can help you establish more collaborative R&D projects through other funding sources but there's also we provide this platform as a service um, and we've also got a, a data a bank of digital assets of already completed projects that you can integrate within your business or your, or your research and on top of that as well we also do training and skills um, and I think that's it for Hartree. Okay, so uh, I'm Patrick Stoll, I'm the SDFC uh, Food Network Tech Liaison. So I'll just uh, give a brief overview on um, the technology capabilities and um, how to go about actually uh, thinking about scoping project ideas. So as mentioned, the SDFC covers a, a quite a broad range of cutting edge research in its remit. Um, and the, the Food Network itself tries to link together the different capabilities um, within the SCFC with specific challenges um, in the food industry. Now, it's impossible for me to go through in five minutes time um, all of the different case studies that could be used. You know, as mentioned, there's 62 different scoping projects covering a huge array of stuff from, you know, instrumentation development to facility use and things like this. Um, but if you go on to the STFC Food Network site, you can actually dig into detail some of the specific projects that have been used in the past. Um, and that's quite a good resource for actually trying to understand whether projects you have or ideas for challenges you have um, might be appropriate for, for scoping projects and things within the Food Network itself. So the, the key thing I actually say when we get approached um, with people asking sort of questions on whether the, the Food Network could help is um, 
to, to come up with a very specific challenge. Um, and then we will actually think a bit more about the, the specific technologies that, that might be needed to solve those challenges. So if you can actually come to us with a very specific food industry challenge, such as we want to measure this, or um, we need to process these sets of data, we can then actually try to identify specific STFC capabilities that might be applicable. And there's such a broad range that, that it's easier for you to actually say, you know, I have a specific problem and then we'll identify the key challenges. One thing I will say is um, anything to do with sort of metrology um, or high precision measurements or processing of large data sets or machine learning, all of those fit well within the, the knowledge base that um, STFC currently has. And there's, there's lots of nice links there in terms of, you know, actually using large data sets um, and using the facilities, as, as um, Tom said, to do things like um, different processing. There's, there's nice X-ray tomography, neutron imaging and spectroscopy capabilities at some of the different STFC facilities, which can be used to produce some, some really good data. And then the, if we can actually identify specific capabilities that might be of use, the Food Network then provides different support for you to actually develop a, a solution. Um, short term, there is obviously the, the Food Network sand pits that you can take part in and actually un go through discussions with members of the STFC community to, to further um, expand on those ideas you have for specific problems. Um, and then there is the, the scoping projects that and actually allow you to develop case study data that could then go on for, for much larger scale research support bids and things like this. So I'll just give one very brief um, example of, of a single case study that we're working on right now to, to show this, this sort of solution technology um, matchup that the Food Network provides. So one of the specific challenges we tried to address this year is that um, for data-driven irrigation modeling, you need really good reliable data on soil moisture and how it varies over time. But the problem with that is that um, soil composition changes over a site, which means that if you have a single point probe, which is you know the, the ones that are commonly used for soil moisture sensing, um, you can bias yourself depending on where you actually put that, even, even if you're just sort of putting it on one side of a field or another. So what we did was actually look at um, what capabilities were in the STFC. And we're actually using um, some hyperspectral imaging cameras, which were originally developed for satellite applications to identify infrared absorption lines, which correspond to water in the soil. And what we've done as part of an STFC scoping project this year is actually um, develop a UAV mapping system, which has one of these, these satellite um, hyperspectral images on it, um, which can actually be flown over a site. And we use automated feature extraction to actually build up maps of the surface soil moisture over large areas at extremely high resolution on the scale of a few centimeters. Um, that allows us to then understand whether there's any biases depending on where we actually originally were going to put these point probe soil sensors. So that's just one example of a, a case study that um, a power scoping project can be used to solve a specific challenge. Um, but there's many, many more if you actually go onto the Food Network website that you can use to try to understand whether any challenge you have might be solved with um, specific SDFC capabilities. So that's it for me.